Cheers from Japan, Tokyo Toy Bastard here, and I am here today with my good friend Dave from Toy Poloi. Hello! So, as you may have seen, we have hit 1,000 subscribers on this channel. So, Dave has flown all the way out to Tokyo to congratulate me and give me a gold medal. That's almost the truth, but yes, I just happen to be here <laughs> as and when you okay, uh, okay. reach this <laughs> massive milestone. So, I would say congratulations Thank you. for reaching 1,000 subs. It's a big milestone. Yes, now we've just got to get to 10,000. Well, that's going to take a little bit more work, and I can promise you that. It's, uh... More videos to come for sure. Well, anyway, so I've invited uh, Dave to my house today, and we've uh, decided to pick some toys from my collection to kind of discuss and uh, also talk a little bit about how we met, um, what, three years ago, four years ago? It must be three years ago now, because it's the third time I've been to uh, Tokyo, and we've sort of met up. The first time was, uh, yeah, via having chatted on Facebook and YouTube right. for a relatively short time, and then just right. agreeing, let's meet up at Toy Cats. Uh, right. And, and talk toys and then go and have a drink afterwards yeah and, and three years later we're still doing it so right we, it's, uh, and i think both of our followers are familiar with toy cats at this point if they've seen uh, yeah, any well, of our videos yeah well i've done quite a few videos and i think I've, I've been filming there for a good well i've been going to it for must be sort of eight years and been filming there for the last two or three at right. least and and sort of yeah showing genuinely the I'm not, I'm not going to say mess that is toy cats because <laughs> that's not that's not rude. It is a mess. Isn't it's a it? beautiful it's, disaster. Yeah, and it's uh, Mrs. Toy Blow always says it, it's like going down into a dungeon because it's quite. You do go down at some steep stairs and then it's like just a sort of little hovel at the bottom of it, filled with floor to ceiling with toys. So if you're not used to things like that, it can be a bit scary. It mm. feels like you're going like deep into the bowels of this building, it's like, oh god, you know, which will, is, will I come out? We should suggest that he change the name to Ishii's Dungeon. <laughs> it could, it Sorry, Ishii. It could work a lot better. But the thing is, right, when you go down there, it's just amazing. You see, there's there's so much stuff, and I don't think I've ever gone there and not bought something. Oh, yeah. Know, it's, or traded something, you know. Uh, this time especially, I, know, I knew that I was going, so I packed my suitcase full of bits, specifically so that I could trade and get some of the good stuff that... Uh, Right. I wouldn't have seen elsewhere. So, uh, right, yeah, so we did some trading at Toy Cats. Mm, so yeah. that was not filmed, but I'm sure we will show some of that stuff in the future. Yeah, I'm going to show, I will, I will show all of the stuff that I've picked up this mm -hmm. trip uh, in uh, a few videos, I'm sure, because I've done quite a lot of filming, so I'll try and split it up. But uh, I, will show, right. I will show the bits that, uh, that you gave me. I'll probably pull out one specifically back there before this is over. But okay, so let's get into uh, the toys that we're going to discuss here. So first off, the very first thing that I think he and I ever kind of talked about online, other than Micronauts, was vintage Kenner Star Wars. Yep, and it will be it will be your little green limbed Chewbacca you have yes. here because I think you did a video. Uh, oh my shaky hands! Yeah, you did a video back when you found that. Did you find that at? Um, I it was at some flea market. You yeah, in Kichijoji, Omocha Ichiba uh, toy flea market, and uh, I did a pickup video. And the first video I think you ever, the first video you ever left a comment on was that video, and you berated me for getting I the origins I, of this incorrect. No, I don't think I berated you. I think you you just said it was a rare thing, and I said, oh, actually, it's, right. it's just faded limbs. I think, but that's a misconception that many people right. have. Right. So here's two things I've heard about it. One is that it was made like this. But you're saying that they faded over time, right? Yeah. And is that because this was different plastic than this plastic? Yeah, all, you'll find it with all styles because they're all made in different factories around the world. And some of the plastics degrade at different speeds and different times. And you're, I, I haven't actually got my little magnifying glass thing so I can read that. My eyesight is terrible. But depending on where it's made, I think that's a Hong Kong one. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, the plastic just degrades if you leave that in the sun. You could make your own one of these, as I said that before, yeah. that just find a Hong Kong Chewy. You know, you'll notice it's actually the back is a different colour to the front. Right. So clearly sun damage. That is much greener. The other thing I noticed about this, this is actually pretty great condition too. It's like got most of the paint and stuff. Like, yeah, it doesn't actually look too bad. Yeah, he's, he's looking pretty good. I still need a, uh, a crossbow for him though. I probably have a spare. I'll stick it in a box for next, time. next time. Thank you. All right, so... Uh, so rest in peace to Peter Mayhew. Yeah, Mayhew a sad, and, uh, a sad day when when an actor that you, you know, an actor you've grown up with, you know, finally dies. So, yeah. But and it's one of those things that's going to happen more and more as you, as we get older, and the films that we love get 
older and older. You know, yeah. It's, uh, Did you ever get to meet him over in the UK? No. The, when we we moved down to Somerset uh, oh my, ten or twelve years ago, and uh, there was a, there's a shopping mall there that was doing some signings, and we went to see. Uh, Kenny Baker, so I got him. Mm -hmm. to, I got him to sign a Cardiff figure, and also Dave Prowse was there, mm -hmm. and uh, Peter May. He was supposed to be there, and I don't think he. I think he cancelled a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was the only time he was anywhere near where I was going. I see. Um, so unfortunately, I never did. I never got him to sign anything. I got to meet him twice in Kentucky and once in Florida. Right. The first time I was at a comic book signing event when he was there with uh, Jeremy Bullock, Boba Fett, and but it was a big line. He was like kind of just pushed through, and the second time I met him was in Florida, and it was before the the Star Wars reboot, and he was just sitting there by himself, like he had no line of people. I just went over and talked to him for a little while, he was a sweet guy. And then yeah. the same thing in Kentucky, before Star Wars reboots, no one in line I think a lot of those actors where they're not, you know, they didn't really have that many films afterwards, and or, you know, or yeah. weren't particularly famous, they just are normal people. I think Dave Prowse has always been like that, he's right. quite a normal guy, and even Kenny Baker, when I met him, just really nice, and you can chat, there's no sort of rushing you or, or sort of pushing you about it's just come and talk and, right. and the, the thing that always amuses me is the difference in price that they charge for autographs as well oh uh, yeah uh, i saw dave prowse i think this you know this is a good few years back he was charging 20 pounds for an autograph and you could have a photo with him as well mm -hmm. kenny baker was five pounds yeah like it was <laughs> hey, even 20 it doesn't sound bad compared to some of those people I'm, at the time i thought it was quite a lot but billy Dee williams i think was charging like 100 bucks at the convention oh, I was at last. Yeah. I think, isn't it like, uh, you know, different franchise, but Star Trek, William Shatner is one of those people. Oh, yeah. just, it's just like hundreds, it's not even. Uh, well, he also lives in Kentucky. He, he, yeah, I used to see him all the time at uh, horse shows. Oh, wow. He owns a lot of horses. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Bye, Chewy. Oh, hi, Coco. On to the next figure. It's my dog. So I picked another one off your shelf. Yep. Which is this Batman, because I I've got a few Batman figures. I'll show it to you. Everyone. I've got a few Batman figures because so I get a lot of people asking me to fix the uh, Kenner Superpowers uh, sort of era toys. Right. So I picked up. I've got. A, I've got the you know the traditional you know uh, grey jumpsuit uh, version of them, mm. and I've also got a couple of the Toy Biz uh, Batman movie ones. You know, right. With the with the, with the uh, little belt buckle that you can. Right. And out. a good way to tell the difference between those is the the Kenner ones have gold logos and the Toy Biz have yellow. Yeah, well, the both I've got I've got two of the the uh, the yellow toy biz ones and a whole bag actually of broken bits because a friend of mine sent me mm. a whole bag of broken ones thinking I can fix them. At some point I will. But so what is this one? Because this clearly has yes. So this is one. Ones. This is one of the more sought after uh, Kenner uh, Batman figures. It's one of the ones that goes for a bit more than usual, and you can see that he's got a separation between his face and his cowl. That's because you can remove his cowl. I've got a, I've got bad luck as far as breaking things on camera here, so let's I'll be careful. My fingers I should probably have blow dried this a bit. Yeah, oh, it. Got it. And underneath you have Michael Keaton. I was going to say which which By era Batman. is it? This was uh, eighty nine. Yeah, Michael Keaton. And so that's Kenner, is it? Yeah, Kenner. Oh, this is actually released in ninety, but his gloves come off, so like his uh, front chest comes off, and he's got this wicked uh, shirt, super like. Oh, Early cool. '90s <laughs> shirt, and so that's uh, sort of him in casual mode. Yeah, that you wouldn't. That's uh, Bruce Wayne. I've seen a lot of people at cons that replicate this shirt and wear it and just go as Bruce Wayne with this Look. shirt on. Does that actually say? Oh, I see. It's just a distorted bat logo, is it? Yep. I thought that was going to be like an autograph or something no, or like that. No, <laughs> no one will ever notice. It's, no, exactly. It's yeah. Not a bat. I'm not logo. Batman, even though I'm wearing a shirt <laughs> with the with the bat logo just slightly distorted on it. No one would notice. I love I love the cowl because you could put this on other figures and make them all Batman. So like you could make Luke Skywalker into Batman. You could make uh, GI Joes into Batman. Yeah, and all like, of his armor it's comes off. Cool, isn't it? Yeah. So is that? Uh, I don't know what you call it, like boomerang thing that stuck in his that hand. That stuck in his hand. And the uh, the other versions come with a loose one, but yeah. the glove comes with that he's got attached. A, he's got a strangely elongated neck as well. He's got a turtleneck on. <laughs> yeah, but that has made his neck extremely long. That's a, like an unnaturally long neck. That's a cool figure though. I've never seen that Yeah, I love before. this one. Well, yeah. That's that guy. Yeah. Same by Michael. Bye. And what were we moving on to next that I found on your shelves? I think these caught my eye because uh, yep. you know I'm a fan of uh, 
Well, pension cyborgs and uh, micro men. Right. So we like our clear toys with chrome innards. Yeah. So you have these clear Godzillas with yeah different red and blue in. Well, that was sort of red and pink. Yep. This one's got one side that's kind of pink and one side's kind of red, and they're both like a chrome film inside. And these were actually bootlegs um, sold in the early to mid '70s. They were sold on a blister card, and these were mega cheap back in the day. But these days, these are you. In the U.S., if you found one online, you could probably pay up to 50 for a loose one. Here, you can find it for about 30 loose. And they came on blister cards. Those are 100 bucks or more uh, these days. But these are based on the uh, original Godzilla figure that was first produced in 1969, the Marusan uh, Godzilla, which I have over here. If you want to compare it... Um, actually, I think I have a miniature version because I don't want to take that giant one out. Little couple Keshi and Tokyo Tower. <laughs> so it's based on this figure. It, it almost feels fitting that Godzilla has knocked some things off your shelf. That's true. So if you could see, uh, it's also known as the J J tail. You got the J slot Boba Fett. You got the J tail. Uh, so did they only make Godzilla versions of these, or they're rather they rather sort of the, the no? The they made uh, they made Ultraman. Uh, they made Mazinger Z. They made uh, Hinchin Cyborg. Um, Don owns uh, some of the other ones. He picked up some, and he has a bunch of the Hinchin Cyborg bootlegs. But they put up, they pumped out a lot of uh, rip off Hinchin Cyborg uh, stuff in the mid seventies uh, to kind of you know capitalize on that market. No, they're intriguing. I've never seen them before. I'm certainly going to keep an eye out for those because. Uh, Anything that's clear plastic with uh, with visible innards seems to. Uh, I don't know. I just got. I like the look of it. So, yeah, yeah, they're, great. they're cool. They're cool. Stick out over here. So, what was next on our? Uh, well, this one. I saw. I picked this off your shelf because to me it reminded me of. Uh, well. You said Rambo, yeah. I did say Rambo. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's all half Rambo, half Bruce Lee now. But it was. It, he does Very have, close. If he had, if he had a sort of bandana on, that's a, a real Rambo look. I'll, I'll give you a rundown. So, what is this figure? Because it's uh, not something. Okay, so followers of mine um, that are familiar with Japanese anime probably recognize this character. He is Kinshiro from Fist of the North Star, and um, he is actually originally based on uh, Mad Max and Bruce Lee crossed right, together. Right. And. Um, Later on, he started to look a little bit more like Rambo. So in the later ones, it's, I think it's the hard eyebrows that yeah. he's got there. He's got quite a pronounced eyebrow, uh, you and can, uh, you can see that it's he's topless in this. He normally has the the leather jacket with the shoulder pad, just like Mad Max. Ah, oh, okay, but okay. This figure did not come with that. Um, I like the bullet holes. He's also got across yeah, his chest. Those were put into him by someone that has come through, and they. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, so it's finger, like finger holes as opposed yeah. to bullet holes. So he knows that they're basically a martial art they practice called Hok uh, Hokuto Shenken, and they can all basically touch certain uh, pressure points, and then you'll explode. Of course. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very violent. It's a, it's a cartoon. A, a daily occurrence. Yeah. yeah. This was one of the most popular uh, manga and anime back in the early '80s, and it was one of the first ultra-violent uh, animes back in the day. And uh, yeah, it's still super popular. You'll see this all over the pink pachinko machines and things when you walk around in Tokyo. And uh, little known fact, I actually used to work for this company when I first moved here. Cool. Um, yeah, back in 2005, I worked on the manga for the prequel. And I didn't own any of the toys. And that's from uh, 1986 Bandai. These are pretty hard to come by. So when I found it, I was like, I've got to have something to represent my, my time there. So that's the only Kinshiro figure I own. So what sort of stuff did you do you know, for them in... Just drawing the the frames of, of so the comic books. So I or? I did the I did the framing, the inking of the framing. I did the uh, minor details on things that were not like close ups of the main characters. I did inking on non close ups of main characters, and I did all of the uh, rendering for the special effects and the the, uh, the tone. Why? Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, that's a it's a good figure to have because it's got a memory. And I always like figures that have got some sort of link back to yeah something you've done or some sort of childhood memory. And this is one of the the first Bandai toys that was kind of articulated and, you know, you know, Hinch and Cyborg was articulated, but Bandai didn't really do toys like that, it, so this is... It does have a feel of Bandai about it, it's much like the uh, uh, Power Rangers stuff. It feels that sort of, I'm not going to say clunky, but yeah. oh, like Bandai stuff is fairly basic sometimes in its, yep. in its, its construction. Uh, it... Yeah, there we go, yeah. And uh, 1985. Nice. But yeah, he's got a famous catchphrase, uh, Omae wa mo shindeiru. It means you're already dead. 
That's from him poking his finger in your chest. Alright, moving right, on. Next up, we've got this, and the reason I picked this off your shelves is because you've given me a whole load of these, so give me some more info. I like this one particularly just because he's got wheels on him. Yes. Uh, and it reminds me a little bit of some Transformers with this sort of pop-up action. Right. Uh, so what what is this? So this is Gamera, and this is Gamera from the Gamera tri uh, Trilogy, the third movie in the Gamera Trilogy. And this was a rare uh, UFO catcher, I believe. It came from a UFO catcher, and there were like two versions. One's like matte finish, and then this one's got like the sparkles and stuff. And um, when I first moved here, one of the first things I started collecting the most were of uh, Gamera because I didn't really know about him before. And I discovered him when I moved here through a friend named Dennis. And then I went crazy collecting these. But I actually found this uh, just earlier this year. And um, I originally had the, uh, the matte painted one, but I, it was broken. But it's basically a pullback toy, or a, well, not quite a pullback toy, friction but toy. a friction toy. Yeah. And uh, basically, you're supposed to wind it backwards, and you would think that it would just go forward, but it goes backwards, and that's because when it, the tail hits the wall, let's see if we can get it to work. It might not work without it being on the floor. I want to see it flicks out. It, yeah, it pops up, and he stands up, <laughs> and he's menacing. And uh, for those who are not familiar, Gamera flies. He's a giant flying turtle. And uh, so he's in flying pose, and then he's in landing pose. But yeah, it's pretty cool because I, well, I, the, yeah, the reason I picked this is because you just have given me a whole load of uh, miniature little vinyl toys from Gamera, yep. and a book sort of detailing the history of it. Um, yeah, and it's not something I really know about because you know, what well, you've seen, I like Ultraman and all the monsters and right. sort of that, that go along with that. So this one is new to me really so i've got yeah. quite a lot of reading up to do and I'll, I'll, i will read the book you give me and the little uh, vinyl toys will come and display with my ultraman uh, yeah. sort of selection of monsters and various uh, other vinyl toys so uh, yeah. yeah that's really cool no it's a nice one yeah camera's amazing i also have a tattoo of them on my arm i'm not going to show that it's <laughs> <laughs> for another video it's for another video and the final bits well again you gave me in your little uh, pack of pieces you gave me this guy, yep. although in uh, purple. Right, that's uh, Future Trunks I'm with sorry. Saiyan armor. I've, got, I've picked a few of them off the shelf here, so I'll show, the, show them yeah, all. You wanted a rainbow assortment. Yeah. This is uh, Teenage Gohan, this is a rare one, and this is Goku, the main character of the story. Yeah, so what are these? Because I've never seen, like, I've seen these uh, rubbery toys. I've picked up a few of them before because I, you know, I like Gatcha Man and Battle of the Planets. Right. I, picked, I picked them up. Because specifically because they're the uh, Gatchaman version, but this is obviously different with the uh, sort of die cast chess piece of it. So. Right, so if you're familiar with the rubber figures, originally they were popularized by the Kiniku Man, the King Keshi, uh, back in the late 70s and early 80s. And then around that time, a lot of other companies, uh, mainly Bandai, I mean, they started producing other um, other franchises, through mostly through Bandai, but um, other companies too. And they got really popular, so... Uh, one of the first ones that came out after the big uh, Kinikuman wave was Dragon Ball in uh, around 85, 86. But these are from Dragon Ball Z. So these are produced around 1990. And uh, these were called the Full Metal, uh, Full Metal Jacket Collection. So they came with uh, die-cast metal armor or clothing. And some of them are pretty hard to track down. And they sold them in either box sets or they sold them in Gashapon machines. And... Uh, Someone's got a motorcycle outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really big on the Dragon Ball Keshi. Um, you can see like behind behind Dave here, there's like a wall of them, and I've got jars of them on my computer. And uh, these are some of my favorite ones, and I've collected near nearly every character, but since you're not much of an anime fan or know much about Dragon Ball, but that's one of my biggest passions, so I figured I'd have to give you something interesting. No, it's, it's, uh, it's all new to me. I think the reason I'm not that into them is because I... Just a little bit too old. Right, I guess right. by the time that Dragon Ball and stuff like that was on the TV, I'd have probably been into different things. I think it's you know it was about the time if you're saying nineties, I probably selling off all of my toys because I got right. into remote control cars and mm. computers, and so I'd have given up. You know, you also feel a bit at that sort of age. I'd have been sort of well, yeah, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, right. no, a bit older than that actually. You just start to you know following other. kids. Oh yeah, yeah, and that. So I got rid of all of my toys and right. stopped watching cartoons. Yeah. But then when I bought on my twenty again, <laughs> I'm back watching cartoons and collecting toys. So it was right. a very short window of, of uh, 
naivety, but I think these would have come out when I wasn't really into toys right. and cartoons, and so just got missed off my radar. It's a bit like Pokemon. I get Pokemon, I like it, but it's it never grabbed me. If you I'm don't like it, I'm a Pokemon hater. I like <laughs> I like the style of them. I think yeah. they're quite. And I can, Pikachu's all right. Pikachu's all right. What's the Polly World? Is it the one with the, the swirly thing on his chest? <laughs> I know a couple of them. And I never really got into it. Again, it was just that sort of wrong era for me. Right. Yeah, those came out right after Dragon Ball got popular, or Dragon Ball Z got popular in the U in the US. But yeah. So how much do these sort of things go for then? The, the, um, um, the... It depends on the character. Like, and it depends if you get them in the capsules or in the box sets. Some of them are quite pricey. Some of them, uh, twenty and up, twenty buck, twenty dollars and up. And then some of them you can find occasionally for just like five bucks or something, um, or five hundred yen here. But yeah, the box sets are quite expensive. About four expensive. pounds in the UK. I'll just yeah. do a little bit of translating <laughs> to your UK audience. So. But yeah, uh, those are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Well, I'm going to certainly, you know, it will go on display in my room because it's not something I've ever, you know, ever had before. You at least have to learn about this character to appreciate the figure itself. I will more. do. He's one more. of the coolest characters in the show. I always do a lot of reading up whenever anyone gives me stuff. I always look up what it is because I like to know the sort of histories of the toys and the just the general background because. Sometimes that sparks off a new collection. I mean, you must find the same thing. If someone gives you one thing, sometimes you'll suddenly go, oh, I didn't know about that. Oh, yeah. And then sure. you know, you've spawned a new, a completely new connection mm -hmm. just from one figure. Same so, thing with these. I found one yeah. of these and I was like, what is that? Oh, it's Dragon Ball. Oh, how many of these did they make? There's no information. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the fun of it. You'll, you'll just, you know, a new collection is formed from one single toy. Well, we're on the topic of that. The only way that you can find out information about these guys, if you're interested, is this book. Um, so you said that you went to the shop at Mandarake that sells the little rubber figures? Yeah, yeah. So the the guy that runs that shop with the long hair that's kind of dyed, he he and a couple other guys produce these books. So these are produced through Mandarake, so they're only sold at Mandarake. This is the one that catalogs all of the Dragon Ball Keshi from the 80s and 90s. This book alone originally was about eight dollars and it's tiny yes yeah, a thin book this book currently goes for a hundred to 150 dollars because they were very rare and obscure and lost and but it's the only way that you can find out about these characters crazy yeah crazy yeah no, i did i went in that shop specifically to see if i could find any more of the uh, gacha man uh, keshi and i did i found a huge bag of them you know, there must have been a couple of hundred in there. And I could see one figure that I wanted on the side of the bag, but it was like two and a half thousand yen. So it was that, uh, you know, sort of nearly 20 quid. I just can't do it. Yeah. I couldn't, not for just one figure, you know, I'd have right. a whole bag of this stuff. You're going to get crazy about it first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, yeah, so I, did, I didn't bother buying it. Just, you know, I could see one figure in there. I suppose if I could, if I could speak Japanese, I might have been able to say, can I have that one? I'll give mm. you you know, give you a hundred yen for it or something, but uh, no, I left it this time. It's too uh, too much to buy. Well, I'll get you addicted before uh, <laughs> before too long. Don't worry. <laughs> it could happen. It could happen. It'll be rubber toys and camera. That's yeah, all. he's gonna yeah. come in for those every year. Well, as I say, now that you've given me a few things I've never had before, it could. It, you know, I'm, I'm quite often tempted into new collections. So uh, yeah, they, they, the the more monsters I have in my collection, the, the more chance there is. <laughs> That's what I was betting on. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for coming coming to my house today and talking about these things. And That's uh, right. Thanks for inviting me. It's always nice to see. I always like to have a sort of look around your collection and see, oh, see you. what new things you've got because it's, on the whole, it's completely different to the stuff I collect, and I yep. like that. I like being able to see. And this probably looks a bit different than it did two years ago, too. Yeah. I think Dragon yeah. Ball has kind of eaten up the room. Yeah, I, you did, you did have, certainly have a lot of different things on the wall. you still got all your Ghostbusters up. Yeah, never so. given up the Ghostbusters. Yeah. Can't a, give up the Ghosts. There's, there's a lot of new things around. And a lot of old favourites. as well. Yeah, yeah. Nice oh, we didn't talk about any Microman. Oh. Um, we'll year. save that for next time. Next yeah. year. <laughs> next year. All right, guys. See you next time. See ya. Thanks for the 1,000 subscribers. Let's get it to 10,000. Or 10 million. <laughs>